Hey everybody, it's Dr. B, live from the hive. This is the buzz on protecting your children and yourself from insect bites. Well, it's springtime and in Georgia, that means we have about two weeks of very nice weather followed by an oppressive summer. And what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be getting outside. And who's outside? All the bugs, all those biting gnats and uh, other insects. Now, the th big thing we're gonna talk about today is bug sprays. You need to use these very sparingly. You don't want to just soak the area, and make it look all shiny and drippy with bug spray. Use it spar sparingly, mostly or just only on the exposed areas of skin. You don't want to use any kind of bug repellent uh, for any kids younger than two months. After two months, there are some that you can use, but you have to use them uh, with precautions and you have to, to uh, use them sparingly, as I've said. If you're using a spray, do not spray it directly on a child's face or even on your own face. Better to spray it onto your hands and then put it on with your hands on your face. Avoid your mouth, avoid your eyes and your eyelid. All these things are doing is masking your odor. So if you have uh, an area like your eyelids that are not covered, it's fine. Chemical will be around there and it should repel the bug without being directly on your eyelid. You need to reapply this as directed on uh, the bottle or on the, on the can. And uh, if you do that properly, sometimes these will last up to 10, 12 hours. But if you're hot, you're running around, you're sweating, you're probably going to have to reapply it uh, more often. And the last thing to say about application is if you're going to grass, uh, high grass or weedy areas, and you're afraid that maybe some ticks or things are going to get on you, the best thing to do is wear long pants. Physical barriers obviously are very important. Wear long pants, wear big socks, tuck the pants into your socks, tuck that all into your boots, and then spray the outside. Spray on your boots, spray on your lower legs where that, where that uh, connection is between your boots and your pants. You tuck it in, spray on top of that, and you shouldn't have any problems. Now let's talk about the individual uh, bug repellents. The first one is the one that is in most of uh, the sprays and uh, the deep wood stuff and the stuff that hunters use. And this is called DEET, D-E-E-T, the chemical is DEET. This is the most effective bug repellent there is. It is effective against mosquitoes, ticks, gnats, chiggers, biting flies, anything like that. But it is also a pretty toxic chemical. So you do not want to use it on the very young. And, and again, do not use this on less than two months of age. It is a skin irritant. If you ingest it, it can be toxic and cause nausea and vomiting. In large amounts, this is known to be a neurotoxin, so it will injure your, your uh, neurological system. And if you do use this on, on younger people, you need to use less than 30% DEET and use it, again, sparingly on the exposed surfaces. Again, you don't have to put this directly on the skin even. You can put it on top of a sun hat. You can put it on top of the pants. But remember, the kid's going to be touching their pants or their shirt and maybe chewing on their fingers. So be very careful about using this. And again, use a lower concentration. Most of the things you're going to find over the counter, the off and the cutter uh, sprays and things like that are going to be 15 to 20 percent deep. Officially, that's supposed to be safe. I'm very careful about these kind of things. Don't use them in large amounts. Choose these carefully and make sure that you read the labels. The next one is this sounds, sounds even more chemical because the name of the active ingredient is IR3535. This is another synthetic uh, chemical, obviously. This one is supposed to be safe for two months and up, up. This works mostly on mosquitoes. It's not great for chiggers or ticks or things like that. But if you're in your backyard, it's probably going to work pretty well. It works. Actually, it does work pretty well on mosquitoes, so that would be fine. Now, the next one is picaridin. And this is actually my personal choice is what we use because this is going to be safer than uh, IR3535 or uh, DEET. Some say this is natural, but it is a chemical derived from the black pepper plant. This, though, is going to be safer for babies older than two months. It's good for mosquitoes, chiggers, ticks. That's why I like it. It doesn't usually irritate the skin like DEET will. It doesn't make it too, feel like re greasy like DEET will. Uh, that is a natural chemical. It's just taken out of there in a very making it at the factory kind of way. The next one I want to talk about is oil of lemon eucalyptus. This is a natural oil from the leaves of the lemon eucalyptus tree. This one is very natural. 
It uh, is a very strong smell. A lot of people like the smell. This is chemically similar to citronella, but this oil is very concentrated, much more potent than citronella. Citronella works kind of iffy. This one works pretty well. It's good for babies over three years of age. That is, and you're like, well, if it's so natural, why do you have to wait that long? It can irritate the skin. That's why baby skin is very sensitive. This is a natural product. And because it's natural, natural chemicals like this and citronella, you do have to watch for skin irritation from allergies and allergic reactions. This works pretty, really well for mosquitoes. Probably good for chiggers and ticks too. Um, but mosquitoes is really what you want to use this for. Next, I'm going to talk about this is Skin So Soft Bath Oil. This is supposed to work for mosquitoes. And I'd say it probably works mildly for mosquitoes. We used to use this down in Cedar Key uh, when I was growing up in Florida, and those mosquitoes were very vicious. So I don't know, maybe, maybe if you're running the mill mosquito, it'd be okay. But those Cedar Key mosquitoes, it did not work that well for. I hate the smell, but at least it's not, not really toxic, and this is going to be a safe thing. So this is a chart. That's just a summary of uh, the, the bug repellents. And you can see the ages there. The DEET, I would say that's going to be the most toxic. Which one's the most natural? The oil of lemon eucalyptus. Pyridin is sort of natural. It is derived from a, from a natural plant. Uh, if you want to cover all the bugs, DEET and Picaridin are going to be best choices. And duration, the skin so soft is pretty short. Oil of lemon eucalyptus, up to six hours. You're going to have to reapply that and you have to be careful again because that can irritate your skin. Um, and the other ones, if you reapply them as, as you're instructed, then they should last for up to 12 hours. Now, physical barriers are always important and they're non-toxic, which is great. So you can get a net like on this stroller. It just goes over the stroller. You can put any size baby in there. Obviously, you can get a preemie baby. Not going to hurt them at all. So this is a great idea for your younger babies. And you want to take that walk after work or when the sun's going down. That's when the mosquitoes are going to be out there. So definitely you want to keep one of these around. They do make bug nets for cribs as well. And you can always wear lightweight, long sleeves, you know, longer pants. That's going to keep the mosquitoes off babies as well. So those are also good ideas that are non-toxic and uh, you can find them anywhere. So let's say you didn't use any of those sprays or they didn't work well. What are you going to do now? You got some bug bites that you want to take care of. Well, there's some med medicines that we can use that you can find over the counter. The first one is Benadryl. This is liquid Benadryl. And look at that. Oh, delicious bubblegum flavor. It's probably awful. Oral Benadryl is great for the itching and the swelling and the rashing that you might get from this. Can make you a little bit sleepy. Um, we do not recommend using the topical Benadryl, the cream Benadryl. I don't think it really works well. And one other thing I want to point out about Benadryl is that Benadryl brand does also have this, which is, uh, if you look at where it says children's under that, it says one milligram per ml oral solution, cetirizine. This is not, when we say Benadryl, we're talking about diphenhydramine, which is a medicine that's really great for itching and it works quickly and it wears off after about four to six hours. This is Benadryl brand cetirizine, which is Zyrtec. This is a 24 hour medicine. And as, as far as like a acute problem, like a bug bite and itching for that, it is not going to work. This is an allergy medicine for things like seasonal allergies. So when you do get Benadryl for your itching, make sure it is diphenhydramine. There's also chlorpheniramine, which is another short acting uh, rapid onset uh, antihistamine. And those are the kind of things you wanna work, look for. You don't wanna get cetirizine, which is not for an acute problem like a bug bite. The next thing we have here is calamine lotion. The active ingredients are zinc oxide and usually ferric oxide. If you know anything about chemistry, ferric oxide is also known as rust. So get you something rusty. <laughs> Don't get anything rusty and rub it on your kid. But it does help to, with the itching uh, from mosquito bites and things like that. And the last thing is if you are just, the kids just clawing at themselves, hydrocortisone 1% cream like this one. You can get this over the counter. It's safe to use on most body areas up to four times a day. Uh, just ask your doctor about this because this is a stronger chemical, but this will definitely help with itching and swelling and all the other problems that you can get from bug bites. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what attracts bugs? What attracts mosquitoes? Because we hear all the time, my kid just attracts mosquitoes. They are a mosquito magnet. Well, there are some things that make uh, kids especially more attractive to mosquitoes. And here's a chart. What attracts biting insects? Carbon dioxide. 
These mosquitoes are very smart. Their food source is mammals. And so they're attracted to things uh, that make carbon dioxide like mammals. So who makes a lot of carbon dioxide, especially for the size? Kids, they're running around a lot, exercise, a lot of activity. They're breathing really fast. They're putting out a ton of carbon dioxide. They also put out a lot of body heat for their size. They have a larger surface area than, a, than an adult. And so they put out a lot of body heat. Lactic acid, sweat, those are also chemical scents and signals that mosquitoes are looking for. And those also come from people who've been running around. Type O blood, I'm not sure why, but they like type O blood. Most people in the United States do have type O blood. I have type A, so I never get bit. No, that's not true. You will get bit by mosquitoes, but for some reason, Typo blood is something that mosquitoes are more drawn to. They're also drawn to dark clothing. So if you're outside, you're at a summer party, make it a white party, wear all white. Looks very fancy and hopefully you won't get too mosquitoes. But also, you can probably see the mosquitoes better when they're flying next to you, and then you can whack them before they even uh, get on your skin. Alcohol consumption, especially beer. If your baby is having a beer, you wanna take it away from them for many reasons. And one of them is that it will attract mosquitoes because they're drinking that CO2, which is what they use to carbonate uh, beer, and that's probably, probably why. There's certain skin flora and bacteria that put out certain odors, and uh, so some people who have different types of skin flora may attract mosquitoes more. Uh, dawn and dust, they don't like bright lights, they don't like bright sunshine, direct sunshine, so you see them at those times of day, living in the shade, living around bushes, and around windbreaks, they do not like sunny, bright, windy days, like the rest of us do. Some people probably are just more sensitive also to, to bug bites and they probably have a larger reaction. So it seems like they attract uh, mosquitoes more, but it, it might be just that they're also having a larger reaction. Always consult your doctor about the best way to prevent bug bites, especially if your child has sensitive skin or allergies. And don't forget those physical barriers that we talked about earlier. They are very important. Like I said, we will be talking about insect-borne illnesses at another date, uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Lyme disease, uh, some of the mosquito-borne uh, encephalitis, that kind of stuff. But as long as you prevent these bites in the first place, you shouldn't have to worry about them too much. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and come back later in the week when Dr. Julie will be here. I think she's talking about discipline of toddlers, uh, from toddlers to teens. So that should be very interesting, uh, especially since I've been watching her discipline our kids for a long time. I want to see exactly what she says. I'm Dr. B and this has been The Buzz. See you next time.